Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Asian Report and starting with China here and with China obviously we're still in a downtrend uh, here and we're looking at um, well from wave B here wave 1 and wave 2 and then 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 an impulse wave for wave 4 so we've also wave 3 rather so we're also looking for wave 4 now so um, as you may know so we can put move that that needs to go in there and so we're looking for an uh, ABC correction for this market we do have an ABC in there already as, as up and down and up in here as well so um, but that's a little bit small compared to the previous wave structure of one lesser degree so this one here should be actually bigger so I'm thinking that um, if I could just delete those there I'm thinking that um, this is all just the A wave and then that's the B wave here and then we'll go up for this C wave uh, here so a larger sort of correction uh, here and that can move back to well the closest largest number is 13,000 but also the wave 4 of one lesser degree so it's still uh, uncompleted in its downtrend uh, here and also to the move up here right that's also corrective because it's got overlapping wave structures so the first high here and then the move down here overlaps that high here so that um, is a corrective move it's a continuation pattern but it may be complete but I don't think so so um, it still needs to make a larger correction here for um, for China for the Hang Seng um, we've obviously got support on on the major trading level here uh, number three uh, 30,000 in this case here um, however um, the trend I still see here is still uh, uncompleted to the downside as well but I know with corrections they can get they can just travel sideways and get a little bit ugly um, so we haven't I can't confirm the move down so this this market can certainly um, move up from here before it moves down as well so um, until the 30,000 becomes a retested resistance then we don't have uh, uh, a high probability scenario of this moving down but still you wouldn't move you wouldn't trade this down unless you had a nice you know retest here set up here and then move down below that previous low there because then you know it's been rejected but it hasn't been rejected it's just still coming down at this stage here trying to get down here um, I can see that um, I mean we have an impulse wave here and then we have this corrective wave within here so we should be making new lows here um, but of course um, with corrective moves other variations can come out as well so um, I'm not uh, quite sure here but um, this is the, the count to the downside but um, it could certainly move up first so um, yeah any just move this here so any long trade that you wanted to take in here needed would need to go above this daily high here so um, moving up through that point there would be a catalyst for um, a move to the upside there but otherwise um, we're looking for um, a move down lower through here so I'll just save that and leave that um, but it should you know just you just need to wait for the breakout for that one and for the nifty here we can see that also this pattern across here is also um, corrective in in its structure as well so in 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 it's a continuation pattern so in the trend up it's got corrective patterns here so it will make a new high and we've still got our 61.8 percent here and also the number eight here we always look at number eight as a um, as a profit taking number so that's where we'll look for that there and it's also got support on top of five here so the levels here in the Fibonacci relationship are one two three five and eight um, so it has support on five so um, it can still push higher from that point the Australian market I thought we may have had a top in but um, it's not the case so we're still going to be moving higher and I'm still keeping the same wave count though and we're looking for five waves up into this structure here it has got a little bit messy within here um, so I do have two bullish counts one takes us to 6,000 and one takes us a little bit higher here but obviously the 6,000 
and the trend line coming through here would leave the 6,000 thereabouts and group two below that as the um, as the point there. And also too in driving these markets too, if I can just go over that, we know that um, it's being driven by the material sector and we know that the banking sector is weak. Normally this market is driven by the banking sector, um, but the banking sector is getting a bit of a hammering. So we're seeing um, the this is BHP here, which is a bit inclusive of uh, energy here as well, but um, it's the same pattern as Rio. So we've got, just in a nutshell, we've got uh, BHP moving up, resources moving up. This is a bank here, Westpac moving down, and we'll come to that in a moment. So they're moving in opposite directions to each other. So I know that this move here as an A and a B and one and two and three and four and five here, and possibly this low here, um, but uh, not to split hairs at this stage, um, but uh, this is a corrective move, so we'll see this top come out through here. Um, I'm not sure if we've already got a little five wave structure in here and we'll pull back into this space before moving up, or we'll just move straight up. I don't know that. We are long in this and we'll hold out for that um, particular move based on this particular correction here. And this is the same as Rio as well. And of course, there's many other stocks in this sort of position, or or, or this much the same. Um, we figured that this market would this also corrective wave here, a nice one, two, three, four, five here, finishing on this low where BHP finished on this low. So I was a bit unsure where to start the wave count from on BHP for that. But um, we're at 80 here, so eight's a profit taking number. Um, even though it's done its you know it's done its thing here, it will have a smaller version of that here. And that's playing out uh, here. So um, I'll just check on the volume here, if you just bear with me a second, if I can just bring that into here. So let me just... I mean, it's interesting in this instance here that... Um, let me just... Just checking on something else. Um, the thing here is that um, even though this this move down through here was on larger volume than this one, so we've got a bit of a uh, uh, trend to the downside on this one here. This one's got more volume in it, um, but the range in the bar is not as long as this one here. It's actually shorter than this one here. So this is not all selling pressure. This is part of buying pressure within here as well. So um, it's not such a bad place to buy in here. Yes, it could it could move lower from here, um, but um, uh, I know iron ore, if I can just bring iron ore over, and I haven't got it labeled, so apologies about that, but um, it's hard to do everything. I can see here that we've got an impulse wave here. Um, so let me just double check this here. Uh, we can have an A and a B and a C wave finishing uh, here, and this does appear to be a bit impulsive to the downside here. Um, let me just double check in here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, through to here. Yeah, it does appear to be corrective here, and we we are under uh, under the five hundred. If we were above the five hundred here, then I'd be more bullish on this. This is basically a move through here, coming back and retesting it. So we will need to be a little bit careful with uh, Rio. Not that we're long in it at the moment, but anyway, um, that's some of, that's buying in here. So that's going to be sticking to um, to to that there for the the time being. Uh, US Rio was um, uh, also up slightly as well. We're going to be here for a while on this one, but um, that's okay. Um, so why we were correcting here, this is what um, I'll use CBA because that's the one that we that's got 9% of the index basically. Um, what I was looking for here was that um, we had five waves here. So we're looking at this as an A wave and then we're looking at this as a B wave here, and then I was looking at this as a C wave up here. But obviously Westpac got degraded um, yesterday by one of the one of the brokers. So um, I was the, I was looking for five waves up here. I don't really have my five waves. I was looking higher up here. 
So there's a bit of a possibility here that um, that this can come to here now and this to here and this to here and this to here and we're going to be looking at, I can't draw it up here on this side, but um, this move to uh, here. So this correction may just get a little bit larger here, but I know it's a correction here. Um, and I know that Westpac here, for example, had the same pattern, the A, the B, and the C coming up through here. And um, yes, and I, I did make a mistake within all of this because we were short uh, through all of this here. Um, I didn't want to. I didn't want to turn profits into losses and allow this to retest 30. That's why I moved out of it. Um, but a little bit unfortunate. So this can this can do two things now. It can be an A wave and a B wave to here. A bounce off the 20 um, the 28 here and a move up here. Or we've got one and two and three and four and five to come into here for this, which is. Um, yeah, so it's still there, and the same with um, <clears throat> with A and Z as well. <coughs> Excuse me. It's also completed a much better sideways wave four correction here as an A wave, a little A, B, and C here, and a pretty dodgy five waves up here. But in this case, it's kind of completed. It's this high, this one back through. Well, this one, this high at an A and a B and a C here, wave three here, wave four and wave five. It's a bit dodgy, but. It's there and it's acceptable. So the things that can uh, happen here, I don't know if that's all completed in here. We may get a fourth and a fifth here, but we could certainly move up 50, 60% here um, of this move here and then move down from that point here. So um, still in bearish, this low needs to be taken out here. So so it's still got, there's still still downside to be, to, to, to come in the bank. So, so um, yeah, so let's just dive into the ASX 200 uh, here now. Let's move these out the way. Okay, so um, I have made it an error. I thought that we may have had a top here. Now I've got two scenarios that can take us higher, one to 6,000 and one, one a tad higher. Um, I'm still happy with this particular count though um, in terms of this of a corrective uh, move here because this move down through here is not in five waves. If it was five waves, I would have been much more bullish from the bottom here, moving up higher from here. But we've got this move here as uh, as an A wave, a B wave here, and then we have five waves in this scenario here. Okay, so it leaves us as an ABC pattern here. So there's something else going on with this particular pattern, and it's it's not easy because it's a wave four and it's complicated. Normally I can follow the banks, um, get their wave count and move in with, with them and because all the banks are the same, you see. They're all in the same sector. When you get into the resource sector, then you've got energy, you've got iron ore, you've got copper and blah, 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 and it goes on. So they all get fragmented up. Um, so working out sort of uh, the push and the pull on them, it's a little bit difficult when the material sector's got the... Um, Got, got the control on this here. I mean, obviously the control's coming from, because everybody's running out of banks and they're putting it into materials, you know? Um, so that's a slightly different emotional um, scenario than uh, just normal. normally the banks um, having control over this whole sort of index here. So, um, yes, um, two ways of going this. I'm going to go to this chart here first. So this chart here is takes us to the 6,000 and this would be looking at this as 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 here for wave 1 and 2. This is all a little bit messy in here and it can be counted differently as well but um, uh, yeah so I need to leave it like this as a 3 here for and tracking 5 waves to the upside here to 6 to 6,000 here and then that would just with a bit more detail and that would take us like this here. So we're looking at wave one and two here. Wave three is not completed yet, and then there'll be wave four and then wave five up to this space here. So if I just go straight to the tick chart here, or did I have that on the hourly chart? Just uh, bear with me a sec here. This is a slightly, this is a different count, so I'll just, but I'll use this as well, but I'll just come back to this count here. 
this is a, a slightly different count where we still have wave one and two in here and that I'm quite happy with that because I can see that even though it's spiked down here I just ignore the spike I know that's like ignorant um, but um, I also need to take other matters into consideration so it has a beautiful one and two and third wave to here fourth wave as an ABC to here and a fifth wave to here so um, all of this we need to look at as the third wave to here then we can have a fourth wave coming back and then a fifth wave pulling back up here further so um, on the one hour chart oops, anyway um, yeah made a bit of a muck up of that but um, yeah it, this one takes us up higher here I'm going to go to the one hour chart now and just see what I've done here okay yeah this should have been part of the other one but it doesn't matter <clears throat> so from here this is all a little bit sort of uh, dodgy in here too so if you've checked the cash market you may have this up as one and back for two here that's kind of acceptable but the problem with that is that um, the move straight down here um, uh, is, is, is five waves to this point here so then this move down through here um, doesn't pan out very nice. The only other way to do this is, is really to have, this is why it's just so messy, is to have wave three over here and have this as an A wave here, a B wave up here and a C wave down to this point here. But I think if we just sort of hang out with the internal structure here and this is basically it here. So this one here we have wave one and two here, then one and two and three there'll be uh, a reaction coming into group two here as wave four, then wave uh, five for wave three and A and a B and a C here, and then up to this point here. So that will take us up there into, <clears throat> so that will leave Friday and Monday as the bullish days. And this scenario across here could be the lunchtime um, hold through here because most of the volume will come in the first hour and a half and then move out in the second, in the last hour and a half of the day. Just come into the tick chart here. Okay, so um, having this as wave one here, an A and a B and a C for wave two here, and then counting up from uh, this point uh, here, which would leave us um, in, in this space here. So I can I can say that group two here is going to be the resistance. So even though the stocks can gap open certain stocks, um, this is already priced in of course. So this is all going to be, um, you know, there's not going to be a lot in this if you're not long already here. So there's, I can't draw on this side here, but there will be the third wave coming up to here, the fourth wave, the fifth wave coming up to here, then an A and a B and a C playing out. So this group two here, 65, 72 and 80, is really going to sort of sort of hold the market in, in this space here. So you're going to have to be a little bit mindful. Yes, it will go slightly above it and it will go slightly below it, but that space in there is really going to be a sideways pattern through here, but holding it through that, if you will, will take you up to the 6,000 in due course. Um, so if you're prepared to wait for that, just don't get caught in here getting in and out, in and out, in and out, because you'll be chopped up. You Basically, we know that the trend's unfinished and um, we're looking for it to uh, move higher. If the trend just broke down through here, and I, I was wrong for whatever reason, break down through here, this area here would be, I can draw on this side of the price, um, below this point here would be uh, a breach of it all. In fact, the 5950 as a retested resistance would be uh, a change in trend at this stage. Um, it could certainly come back down and test it and may go down to 48 or 47 or something, um, but we wouldn't want to see it as a retested resistance here, the midpoint here, otherwise it would be uh, a change in trend at that point. All right, um, I just wanted to have a bit of a broad reach, cover that, look at my mistakes and look at where we're going to, and I feel that we've done that. So um, thanks for tuning in and enjoy the weekend. Cheers.